So thank you for joining us in a new uh, Zoom link. At least hindi na tayo patatalsikin nito after 40 minutes. Okay, so we're going to continue the module one that we have. And I hope you watch the recorded uh, video. Makikita sa YouTube. And you have read the what we call the module. Okay? Na kung saan lahat ng materials na nandoon. So this is just an additional thing. Okay? So we, we have uh, uh, what we could do. Uh, discuss about electromagnetic radiation, the dual nature of light, and we end up with the Bohr model that is similar to a planetary model wherein electrons usually can go from one orbit to another. Okay, so in orbit they have different energy levels. So if electrons absorb energy, they go to uh, one that has a higher energy level, but they won't stay there because it's an unstable state. So after some time, they go back to the orbits with low energy level, okay? Now, in the dual nature of light, we say it's not only, we could say, wave, but with Planck uh, revolutionary discussion on the black body radiation, wherein he said uh, energy in the form of light can be quantized, okay? So we have the dual nature of light being wave and a particle. Now, we can uh, also, we could say, apply uh, this concept to an electron, which is, we could say, a matter. Okay? So here, the dual nature of electron is if the electron is quantized, then it can be said that it also have wave property. Okay, so if the electron, which is usually a matter, can be quantized, so that can be said that you can also have a wave property of it. So when your electron, let's say, it looks like this, it can also behave like a wave, okay? And usually you can observe this, uh, what we call behavior, if you pluck a string of guitar, I, I don't know if you serve, uh, if you have what we could observe it, but linak niyo yung guitar, makikita niyo yung wave like properties niya. And Louis de Broglie in 1924 revolution, or what we could propose that if light is a dual matter, a uh, dual nature, matter can also have a dual nature. And the one that he has here is the electron, wherein it can behave both as a particle and a wave. Because usually matter, you think it's just a particle. But extending the dual nature of light to matter, he also said that it can behave like a wave. Okay? And it, it's very important because one application that they have is since we're talking about the electron. So if you're familiar with the electron microscope, okay? So, the electron mag mag microscope magnify the object by taking advantage on the wave-like property of the electron. Okay? Yung principle na tinatawag nating diffraction. Okay? And if you're going to look at the formula that is involved for this wave-like property, we could say that the wavelength, wavelength here can be replaced by Planck constant mass of the object and the velocity. If you're going to look at this, okay, if you apply okay, the Planck constant here, you can replace the matter in terms of wavelength. So yung particle, pwede siya magkaroon ng wave-like uh, wave properties. Okay? Now, it's not only, we could say, observable because if you're going to look at the wavelength, where uh, it is, it's not in the visible region, okay? So for instance, if you have a 2 gram, 2.5 grams of pimple ball traveling at 15.6 meters per second, if you want to determine the wavelength associated with it, you can use this formula. So you just use what? Planck constant, yung mass in kilogram, tapos yung meters per second na velocity, and you will get this value, which is what? So short. 
hindi mo ma-observe kasi wala siya doon sa visible region. So that's why you don't really observe the wave-like property like, like sa baseball. Hindi mo makikita yung wave-like property of the ball traveling at such uh, what we call high speed. Okay? Now, this wave-like property of matter or electron was really helpful. Okay? Because there's a problem in the Bohr model. Yung Bohr model, applicable lang siya sa single electron. It's not applicable at multi-electron. Okay? Yes, it was able to explain uh, the so-called uh, line spectra. Okay? It was able to explain that when energy is absorbed by the electron, maybe in the form of light, it will go to a higher energy level. But there are some uh, what we call things that we cannot explain. Yung nga, hindi siya applicable if you have a multi-electron. So what Erwin Schrodinger did okay, in 1926, he wrote an equation that describes both the particle and the wave nature of the electron. So tinake advantage niya yung proposal ni Louis de Broglie that we can have a wave-like property of the electron. And he put here is like the wave function that describes the energy of electron with a given wave function and the probability of finding the electron in a volume of space. So on Schrodinger equation, okay, it can uh, only be solved exactly for the hydrogen atom. So parang pareho pa rin kay what we call the Bohr. But the thing is, if you apply it in multi-electron, you can use it, although approximation yung ginagamit na to. Okay? And together with Eisenberg, I don't know if you're watching Breaking Bad, yun yung code name doon ni Walter White. So Heisenberg, Warner Heisenberg, a young German during that time, has this what we call uncertainty principle, wherein he tried to describe the dual nature of the electron. Sabi niya, okay, it is impossible to know simultaneously both the momentum and position okay, of electron. Hindi mo pwede ma, 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 ano, uh, masabi at the same time yung momentum and position. Either you can just say the momentum or the position one at a time. At dyan, dahil dyan, meron tayong tinatawag ngayon na quantum mechanical model. Okay? So, yung concept ni Bohr na orbits ginawa ni na Schrodinger, they make it like an orbital. So, an orbital is a region in space where you can possibly or probably find the electron. Okay? And, and the way I do it is like an electric fan model. So, imagine yung isang blade dyan, yan yung electron. So, if you're going to turn it around, hindi mo ma-pinpoint nasaan yung, let's say, isa sa mga blade. Okay? Pwede mong ano yung speed niya, pero hindi mo mong pinpoint yung uh, location niya, okay, yung position. Now, pag tigil siya, mapapoint mo yung position, pero hindi mo ano yung momentum. But the probability where the blade here, okay, you can pinpoint it. So yan yung parang orbital. Okay? So, so yan yung parang ano nung Schro ni, ni Schrodinger. And he said, this orbital can be described by the so-called four quantum numbers. Okay, the first three quantum numbers are what we call tells you the location of the atom, while the fourth one just tells you the spin. So this is what we're going to discuss today. Okay, so we go first with the principal quantum number, and if you watch the lecture, I have called these quantum numbers in terms of what s. So bawat quantum number may reference ako na nag-start sa letter S. So with the principal quantum number, usually it is a positive integer and it tells you the distance of the energy from the nucleus. So if you're going to look at this, okay, so 1S, 2S, 3S, 
in terms of S, the higher the N, the higher the size. Okay? So, yan yung, we could say, principal quantum number. And it is always a positive integer. So, if you're going to look at this, so this is N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3. So the higher the end, the farther is the electron from the nucleus, the bigger the size okay, of the whole atom. So if you're going to look at this, that small thing, that's the nucleus. So yung, so one S orbital na to, yung electron density, ito yung 90% makikita mo yung electron. And if you're going to look at this, so we could say this is N equals to 1. N equals to 2, N equals to 3, N equals to 4. And the probability that you have there from the distance of the nucleus. Yeah. So that's the principal quantum number. Now, the second one, this one, okay, yan yung tinatawag natin angular momentum quantum number. And usually, the value of L depends on N. Okay? So usually, uh, L is equals to zero to N minus one. Okay? So, yung S that will be described dito, if we're going to look at this, that's what we call the shape. So, anong ibig sabihin dito? If N is equals to one, the only value that you have for L is zero because one minus one is zero. If n is equal to 2, l could be 0 or 1. If n is equal to 3, l would be 0, 1, or 3. Now, each corresponding value of l, instead of what we call using it as a number, they put there a letter. Okay? So, sa letter na yan, Usually, I, 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 I put a name that describes the shape. And I think if you watch the video, you know that, right? So kapag S, usually it's shaped like what? Ano yung S? Anyone? Sphere. Sphere. Okay? So it really looks like a sphere. So when, when you have an S orbital, it's shaped like a sphere. Now, if you have an L equals to 1, it looks like a P or a P, uh, it's a P orbital. And what is the P that we have here? Anyone? Peanut. Okay. It's like a peanut. Parang naman mani, di ba? <laughs> and if you have what we call the D orbital when L is equals to 2, so it looks like this. And D is what? And na yung dinanote ko doon sa lecture ko? Double peanut. Okay, double peanut. Now, I don't have the picture of the F here, but if you watch that video, the F denotes what? Flower. The shape of the flower. So you have the size and you have the shape. So if your size is one, your shape is zero. If your size is, we could say two, it can be zero or one. Okay, so that's, that's the first, uh, what we call uh, quantum number, the first good quantum number. But as I told you, there are three quantum numbers to denote the location of the atom, which is the orbital. So the third one is what we call the magnetic quantum number. Okay? And usually, M sub L also depends on the L value. So for a given value of L, M sub L is equals to negative L to positive L equals to zero. So if you have M sub L, usually, okay, the value of your M sub L is from negative L to positive L, including zero. Okay? Now, depending on the value of L also, you can tell how many values of M sub L do you have. So if L is equals to zero, ilan lang yung value ng M sub L mo. M sub L will just be equals to zero. zero. Okay? So if L is equals to one, 
your m sub l has what? Three values, negative one, zero, positive one. Okay, so if you're going to look at this, if L is equal to two, you have what? Five values that you have here. So to look at the S for this quantum number, I call it the spatial orientation of the orbital. Okay. Now, the way that you look at it here, so you can determine now that each of this orbital represents some sort of an orientation. So if you have a P orbital where the value of L is equals to one, this is the three orientation that you can see. The two PX, the two PY, the two PC, okay? If your L value is two, okay, you have five orientations here. So you know, it should be, you know, M sub L, okay? So we could say the M sub L gives you the number of orbitals. So that's the third. So once you have the three quantum numbers, it can already tell you the location of your atom or your electron. Now the last one, it can only have what? Two values, the spin quantum number. So it's a spin. So it's either plus minus uh, uh, plus one half or negative one half. This comes out when they look at the electron and they found out they have opposite spin. Okay, they did some uh, experiment using the magnet and they found out that usually the electron in a given orbital, they have two spins, okay? So one can be clockwise, which is a positive spin or counterclockwise, which is a negative one half, positive one half and negative one half. So they were able to get this uh, information uh, through experimentation, okay? So these findings that we have there, it is very important later on. So, so they were able to come up with a principle that in a given orbital, okay, you can have at most two electrons of uh, opposing, opposite spin. So if you have this, what we call quantum numbers, so the existence and the energy of electron atoms described by the unique wave function, okay? So the Pauli exclusion principle states that no two electrons in a given atom can have the same quantum number. So if ever they have the same uh, first three quantum numbers, the fourth one will be opposite. So the assignment of the quantum numbers, we could say it's just similar. If you watch a concert, you're assigned with a seat number, or you watch a sport event, you're assigned with a seat number, you're unique. So hindi pwedeng dalawang tao or more than one ang umupo doon sa seat number na binigay sa iyo. So if you're going to look at this here, ito yung parang designation. Okay, and if you're going to look at this, this is the first three quantum number. So if you have a 1S, ito yung first three quantum number mo. So ano ba yung nasa 1S? So, you can have like this one and this one. So this could be what? One atom or one element and this is another element. So they are in the same 1s which is denoted by this. But you can differentiate this from this one by putting this as one half and the other one as what? Negative one half. So if you're going to look at the information given to us by the quantum number, we could say the N, that's the shell. Now, if you have N and L, that's what we call the subshell. Okay? So an N 
equals to one has how many subshell? And n equals to two has how many subshell? Anyone? So an n equals to one has one subshell. And that subshell is L equals to zero. And N equals to two has what? Two subshells. One that is L equals to zero and L equals to one. So meron kang ano dito, dito one S lang. So yan yung subshell mo. E dito, meron kang two S saka two P. Now, if you want to look at the orbitals, so this is the electrons with the same values of n, l, and m sub l. Okay? So, how many orbitals if n is equal to 1? Pwede yung pwede yung tanong eh. So before we go with the electron, how many orbitals when n is equal to 1? Anyone? When n is equal to one. 2. So this was equal to 1, right? How about this? Four, four. 4. So if you watch my video, usually to get the number of orbitals based on the given n, meron kang formula na gagamitin, di ba? Ano yung formula na yun? n squared. n squared. So when n is equal to 1, 1 squared is 1. When n is equal to 2, that's equal to 4. When n is equal to 3, that's equal to 9. Now, each orbital has how many electrons? Or how many electrons can an orbital hold? Hmm? Okay. So, each orbital can hold at most two electrons. Now, let's go on another question. How many p orbitals are there in an atom? Two p orbitals. So p is what? When L is equal to what? Anyone? Two po. So, when we have a P, what's the value of L? One. One. Now, if we have a question here, wherein you ask the orbitals for a given L, what's the formula that you're going to use? Ito ba yun? When... L is given. So, ano yung sagot dito? How many two orbitals are there in an atom? So, if you use this formula here. No, that's two, it's one. Ano yung sagot nyo? Three, two, sir. Three. Remember, when you have L equals to 1, okay, your M sub L is equals to negative 1, 0, plus 1. So ito yung orbitals. Each of them represent an orbital. So if you're going to count this one, so this is what will happen. Now what if how many electrons in 2p orbital. What do I do? So maybe I can still use this one, but I have to add 2 or multiply by 2 because for every orbital, there's 2 electrons. Ito yung mga type ng question na mamimit niyo sa exam. So I want you to master that. Kumbaga, kung lumabas yan, sure points. 
Kaya? Kaya ba? Yes. Chicken? Sinong chicken? Yung exam o kayo? <laughs> so you can be asked a lot of questions there. Okay, you can ask how many electrons when n is equals to 3. Ano yung sagot nyo? Yung mga bago pala yung ngayon lang, I want you to stay after the class, okay? After the session. So, how many electrons are there when n is equals to 3? 18 po. Okay, so if you're going to look at this, so you can use that one. So 3 squared, but this is what? The orbital. So you multiply it by 2, and you will have 18. Now you can also be asked the question, is how many electrons can be placed in the 3D or uh, subshell? So dito, ang given ay ano? In D. So, what is the value of L when you have D? Anyone? Two. Two. Okay, so you can apply that one. So, two times two plus one, and then you multiply it by two. So, this is four plus one, that's five. So, you will have. 10 electrons. So ask yourself, kaya niyo bang sagutin yung mga tanong na ganito? Nasa tingin niyo? Hmm. Anyway, I'll leave it up to you. Hindi ko alam kung nagugutong kayo habang inaangkap ako dito. Oh, by the way, sa mga bago, I would just like to inform you that I am half away from you. I am on the other side of the globe. I don't know if you knew it, but now you know. Okay? It's 12 noon there. It's 12 midnight here. So that's Tuesday there. It's Monday going to Tuesday here. So now you know. Okay? So if ever you email me after the class, don't expect any reply. Most likely, I'll be asleep. And most likely, I cannot upload uh, the recording until tomorrow. Because usually, I'm using my account here. So it is saved in the cloud. I wait for the email, I download it, and then I upload it. So by that time, it will be one hour. Okay? Now, let's look at the energy level. So this is how Bohr assigned the energy level. And that's depending on what? N. Okay? So as you can see here, the energy only depends on the principal quantum. So this is following the Rydberg constant proposed by Niels Bohr. So as you can see there, even though they have different okay, uh, the second principal, uh, the second quantum number, the energy level are almost the same. Okay, but if you're going to look at the reality, they're not really the same in each of these what we call orbitals. So if you're going to look at the energy of the orbitals in a multi-electron atom, you could see that even though they have the same principal quantum number, okay, some of the subshells has higher energy level. And in fact, look at this. This has a higher principal quantum number than this one, but it has a lower energy level. Okay? 
So what is the basis of this? Why is it this one that there's a higher principal quantum number compared to that one? Okay. The explanation for that is the energy depends on the N and L for the so-called N plus L rule. So the way that you look at it, when you add the number together, the lower number has lower energy, the higher number has what we call higher energy. And if you're going to add this one, 4S is equals to what? Compared to 3D. So 4S is 4 plus, what's the value of S? What is L when you have S? Zero. Okay, so that's zero. So that's just four. And this one is three plus, what's D? Two. Po. Two. So you have your five. That's why this is lower compared to this one. The main thing that you have there, okay, so you see the value that is being assigned is the so-called Hopewell principle, the field of electrons. So what does it mean? You fill up electrons from the lowest energy level of the, or, or uh, you fill up the electrons based on the orbitals of the lowest energy level okay, going to the highest. But if you have an excited electron, some of the electrons can occupy a higher energy level. They can bypass okay, the uh, what we call uh, orbitals of lower energy level. So nandun pa rin yung concept ni uh, Bohr that these electrons here, when you excite it, it can go to a much higher energy level. I mean, into orbital of a higher energy or, uh, level. Okay? So if you follow the filling up there, so this is 1s and then the H, uh, 1s2 and then 1s3 or 2s1. Okay, if you're going to look, they fill it up. And then this one, 4. And then this 5. So it's just a stepwise or fill up of electrons from the lowest energy levels. But you could see here, if you fill up the next electron, okay, usually. It's not this way. You have to distribute the electrons because this type of orbitals, anon tawag dyan? Anyone? They are what we call degenerate orbitals. So when you have a degenerate orbitals, they have the same energy level. So what they found out, okay, that if you have the generate orbitals, the electron has to be distributed among the different orbitals before they paired up. Okay? At ang nag dictate yan, ay tinatawag natin Kuhn's rule. So, you have to remember the Pauli principle, okay? An orbital can accommodate at most two electrons, which can also mean that in the same orbital, Okay, there are at least two sets of quantum number. Now, Hohn's rule, okay, the most stable arrangement of electrons in the substance is the one with the greatest number of parallel spins. So what does it mean? You have to distribute the electrons among the degenerate orbital. So once half filled na siya, lahat, saka pa lang siya, mapipilled up. So you cannot do it like this. Na wala to. You have to distribute first the electron. Clear ba yun? Because you might have some questions about the concept. So, pwede kayong tanungin, let's say, ganito. Wala, wala to, ganito. So, the photo shows a violation of what? So, Pauli principle, of uh, Opal principle, or Hans rule. So, ganyan yung pwede mga question na i sa inyo. Okay? Or you can have it like this. So, you will ask the question, this electron configuration shows a violation of what? 
anong binayolate niya? So, pwedeng uh, poly, oak bow, so hands. So, ano yung sagot niyo? Hmm? Kapag ABC. So, that's the possible question. So, this is a violation of why? The P can only accommodate at most six electrons. Question? Hmm. Yeah, gutom na ata kayo. Okay? Now, when you fill up the orbitals according to energy level, you end up with having this what we call sequence. So usually, madali lang yan. You line up all the S, you line up all the P, D, and then F. And then you write diagonally and you follow the sequence. So ito yung sequence. So ano ibig sabihin yun? If you write the electron configuration, you just follow this sequence. And the thing that you need to remember, an S can accommodate at most 2, a P6, a D10, and an F14 electrons. This is based on the number of orbitals that you have. You have 1 for the S, 3 for the P, 5 for the D, and 7 for the uh, F orbitals. And when you fill up the diagram here, so the first number there is the uh, what we call principal quantum number the s is the angular co uh, momentum quantum number and then the number here that's the number of orbitals in that that's the number of electrons in an orbital or subshell so you can have an orbital diagram like this or this or this So when you're doing this electron configuration, this is just how electrons are being filled up or distributed among the various atomic orbitals in a given atom. Tanong. So you can have a question like this, magnesium. So all you need to do, find how many electrons magnesium has. And then you have the sequence, and what do you do? To fill up, so the max is two, two, six. So you have already what, 10? So you have two. So you end up with that one. So you count all the electrons, it should be equal to the total electron of position. You can abbreviate this one as the noble gas, because this is a noble gas configuration of neon or the electron configuration of neon. So instead of writing everything there, you just write this one. Or you can have it like this. What are the possible quantum numbers for the last outermost electron in chlorine? So again, you look at the number of electrons of chlorine, so that's it, 17. So, kagaya nyan, you have what? 2, 2, 6, 2. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 6, 5. So, that means this is the outermost. So, you have it like that. So, ano yung 3? Na quantum number 3, right? Ano yung P? What's the value of P in terms of quantum number? One. And since you have an L equals to one, what's the possible value of M sub L? Negative one, zero, positive one. So you can have it here. Right? And then in each of them, you have what? So 3, 1, negative 1, positive 1 half. 
3, 1, negative 1, negative 1 half, 3, 1, 0, positive 1 half, 3, 1, 0, negative 1 half, 3, 1, positive 1, positive 1 half, and so on. So this, this is just one. And this is, uh, this is a 1, 1, negative 1. So that's are the possible quantum number that you have. Six quantum number because you have three orbitals in P orbital. Now, if you're going to look at this, if you have the periodic table, which we're going to discuss on Thursday, it's easier to look at them. So you have the two S on this one, the P, the D, and the F. And as you could see there, why is this less than that one? So if you have a D, it's usually N minus one. So whatever your N here, when you have the D is minus one. So you have a four minus one, three. Now the F here, usually D to N. So whatever the F is equals to N minus two. So you have it as six. So it goes out here. So it becomes four, six minus two. You have a seven, okay? Seven minus two, that's equals to five. And if you're going to look at the electron configuration, you have it here. The, the, there's always what we call an exception to the rule. I'm trying to find the exception to the rule here. What the hell is cobalt? So when you have a copper and a cobalt, so usually a copper, you have a 1s1 and a 3d10. No, not, not 1s1. It is usually, if I'm not mistaken, 4s1. And if you have a, a chromium, so you have a 4s1 and a 3d5. Because they said, it's more stable if they are even uh, what we call pair up or single pair. So yung isang electron na nasa S magja-jump doon sa D orbital to give you a field or a half field orbital. Now, another thing that you can look at this is the magnet magnetic properties. If you have unpaired electrons, it possesses magnetism, okay? So the presence of unpaired electrons make it paramagnetic. So in, in our own lay term, paramagnetic. Now, if it's unpaired or what we call paired, okay, you have diamagnetic. So in our own term, diang magnetic, walang magnet. So that's one thing that you can be asked, which of the following is paramagnetic, which of the following is diamagnetic. So all you need to do is look if there's an unpaired electrons. If there's an unpaired electron, it's mag uh, paramagnetic. If it's all paired, then it is diamagnetic. So that's what we have for today. Question. Hello? Hello? So, bukod doon sa bago, lahat, lahat may canvas na, no? Yes. And then lahat nasa ano na, group chat. Yes, please. So, puntahan yung canvas ngayon.
because after this, uh, it's bye-bye for us. May iwan yung mga bago. Mga wala pang canvas, wala pang group chat. So, I want you to refresh in your quizzes and see if you can see, uh, and see if you have access to the quiz for today. So, yung mga bago, just stay with me. Kita nyo? So, you need the calculator for that. <laughs> Doon sa quiz na yan. Okay, that's for 15 minutes. Three questions, one of them is what we call calculation. And I already warned everyone na hindi ko ma-write yung exponent. So kapag mayroon kayong nakita parang ganito. Or let's say ganito. So it's just like this. Hindi ko maano siya eh. Maayos. But that's how it is. If, if ever you end up getting a question like that. One of the calculation, but a multiple choice. I'm giving you until 1.30. So tanong. Bago umalis yung mga meron ng, I mean, been with me since last week. Sir? Yep. Hanggang anong oras ko ba yung quiz? 1.30. Okay po, thank you. Yung iba, may tanong? Before we call it a day or a night for me, uh, maiwan yung ibang this week lang pumasok. Yeah. S is equals to L equals to zero. L equals to three is P. L equals to, no, wait, wait. L equals to one is P. L equals to two is B. And then L equals to three is F. So I hope you you're watching the recorded lecture. You lecture ko sa isang klase in addition to this, and then you're reading the module. This is not enough. Okay. The good thing is if we do this lecture, you already read the materials beforehand. So metano. Before I turn off the recording, uh, I, I will Hola. not be able to make the recording available right away. As I told you, usually uh, it's saved in my cloud here in our school. So I wait for the email if it's available and then I download it and then I upload it. So most likely, bukas na to ma-upload. Because it's almost what 12:20. I have to sleep by at least one. <laughs> so yun yung ano ngayon dito. That's why whenever you attend the synchronous session, I'm assuming you already read the material and uh, what we called uh, watch whatever video I ask you to watch. Usually it's just just uh the same lesson but different materials. Yes, Ava. Well, good afternoon po. Anong resource po specifically yung coverage po nung quiz po? Mo module, module 1. Resource. We're still in module 1. Uh, yung parang subtopics po sa module 1. I Usually, kung ano yung covered today and last time. Okay, hindi ko kasi maano eh, kasi ano yan eh, test bank yun nandoon eh. So don't expect that you're going to have the same question. So kung naisip nyo, kukuha kaya ngayon this week, uh, this, this today, 